Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we are going to be having a look at von Willebrand disease, but before we get into that, let's just remind ourselves of how the process of primary hemostasis works. So firstly, let's say we have a cut inside of our blood vessel. The first thing that happens is our blood vessel shrinks, and then we form this uh, platelet plug with the help of von Willebrand factor in a process known as primary hemostasis. And as we said, it involves two things. It involves von Willebrand factor and platelets. Following this, while this is happening in the background, we have some other things trying to form a very sticky fibrin sheath, which is very useful for catching on uh, passing red cells and forming this much, much uh, stronger and more stable plaque to make sure it doesn't get broken in a process that we call secondary hemostasis. And this process involves clotting factors taking part in the clotting cascade. So firstly, where is von Willebrand factor made? Well, von Willebrand factor is either made in endothelial cells or it's made in megakaryocytes. And forming this, both of these uh, substances will secrete this rather large and volatile von Willebrand factor into the blood. Now, this factor is quite dangerous as in its large and uncleaved state, it can grab onto a passing platelets and uh, clot uncontrollably, so we don't want that. Thus, this von Willebrand factor is cleaved by the action of an enzyme known as ADAMS13 into this uh, smaller, much more stable molecule. Now, for this disease, we don't need to worry too much about ADAMS13, but I just want you to keep that in the back of the mind as it does come to play a major part in another condition that we'll have later on. After having been cleaved, the newly cleaved von Willebrand factor will then bind to factor 8 in circulation and then circulate around the body and go to sites where it's needed to patch up holes that may occur. So knowing this, what actually is von Willebrand's disease? Well, von Willebrand's disease refers to a lack of or reduced levels or even dysfunctional von Willebrand factor in our blood. And the most common, this is the most common cause of impaired clotting. And often it can be uh, given out in an autosomal dominant um, pattern. So what sort of types of von Willebrand factor are, uh, von Willebrand's disease are there? Well, firstly, if we just try to think about this logically, we could simply have reduced levels of von Willebrand factor in our blood. This is type one. We may have the normal levels of von Willebrand factor in our blood, but they may be dysfunctional. This is type two. Now, type 2 can be divided up into quite a few different subtypes that we won't dive into, but know that in all of those subtypes, it's ha it has something to do with the fact that our von Willebrand factor is not behaving the way it's supposed to. And lastly, we may have completely or a uh, near complete lack of von Willebrand factor in our blood, and this can be quite severe and it can be life threatening as well. So now that we know that uh, in von Willebrand's disease, it's something to do with not having enough von Willebrand factor. Um, uh, or having dysfunctional, how, what sort of symptoms might we see? Well, if we don't have von Willebrand factor, we can't go on to form the initial platelet plug because von Willebrand is what initially binds uh, to the exposed collagen. So we're going to see symptoms of easy or spontaneous bruising, things like prolonged bleeding at the dentist or during dental extractions, as well as this bleeding from our gums when we're brushing our teeth and things like mucosal bleeding, things like uh, nosebleeds. And also in women, they also tend to see quite heavy uh, periods and uh, menorrhea. So what sort of investigations are we going to want to do? Well, the first thing that we want to make sure is that this is not an issue with the platelets. And therefore, we could do a full blood count, which is usually normal in von Willebrand's disease. We can also then do clotting studies. Now, I would just want you to pause the video for a second and just think about what sort of picture that we might see in clotting studies. In terms of the clotting studies, remember this is an issue with primary hemostasis, so therefore we're going to see a prolonged bleeding time. Now look, von Willebrand here is carrying factor eight, so therefore we're going to see a prolonged APTT, and we were going to see a normal PT. The next thing that we're going to do is want to do some von Willebrand factor levels because we want to work out, are we deficient in von Willebrand's factor? And often in type one or type three, this will be reduced. We can then do a von Willebrand factor functionality assay just to see if they're behaving the way it's supposed to, and this will help diagnose type two von Willebrand's disease. <laughs> so how can we go on to manage von Willebrand disease? Well, the first thing is we have to work out, is this a life-threatening bleed or is this a bleed 
that we see sometimes at the dentist, it's not very life threatening and we can measure it much more uh, conservatively. In the general sense, in the sense that it's not life threatening, one of the drugs that we can use is a drug called desmopressin. So how does desmopressin work? Well, when our von Willebrand factor is actually made inside the endothelial cells, some of it is still inside the cells. Desmopressin helps to release a lot more of the von Willebrand factor from our endothelial cells and force it into the plasma, thus raising von Willebrand factor levels. Another thing that we can use is something that we call tranexamic acid. This is a type of fibrinolytic, meaning it stops the breakdown of clots. And it's very useful when used in the mouthwash form. So say, for instance, if someone's bleeding from their mouth, they can take the mouthwash and it should stop them bleeding. This works by stopping the breakdown of clots. In the more acute scenario, the best thing would be to replace the von Willebrand with von Willebrand factor concentrate. Other things that we may be able to do is give cryoprecipitate just to help um, the background uh, clotting cascade take place. And cryoprecipitate really contains fibrinogen it contains factor eight and it contains von Willebrand factor. So you can see that how giving cryoprecipitate, we're actually replacing quite a lot of the things that um, are deficient. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.